Hello, sweet peas. How are you doing? Welcome back, my fellow duplicants to Oxygen Not Included. Today, we're taking a look at the sweepy space bin thing. And we're going to get more power out of it based on your guys' comments over here. All right, so this design here might look a little bit different, and that is because it's based on your guys' comments here. So let me just go over some of the changes that I've made since the last time you saw this. I have these doors staggered just like this. This allows the carbon dioxide to get inside of here and actually fill up the space. I already made that adjustment to the blueprint, so if you downloaded the thing, you should already have this design up here. The other thing is, I saw this comment that popped in right here, and I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense here from Space Homer, and that was replacing the airflow tiles with the window tiles, that way when the regolith drops down from here onto that, we're absorbing that heat out of that area. So we're going to get a whole lot more power out of this just from that. However, there were many other great ideas as well. Such as, what happens if we were to put the batteries inside of the area that is giving off steam? These batteries do indeed give off a little bit of heat, we're only talking about 500 DTUs per second, but when you add that in with the transformers, which is 1000 DTUs per second here and there, you do end up with a fair amount of heat. So while this right here was set up here because it's made out of iron and would otherwise get too hot, what happens if we go rich boy style and make it out of steel? So that's what I'm going to be testing over here. The last thing here, which obviously makes a ton of sense. So that comment was from John. Q Kindrat down here says, what happens if you throw all of the material that you're mining up here through a rail and then give that off uh, inside the steam? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is ac an excellent idea. And it introduces us to the brand new thing that we can do inside of the game here, which is use some of these conveyor sensors, such as the conveyor thermal sensor. Woo! All right, so I'm going to go absolutely crazy with this thing. We're going to make several cooling loops uh, just to see what happens. So here's what I'm thinking, even though it seems it seems a little bit ridiculous, but that's what you're here for, right? That is I'm going to bring this down and we're going to let this be kind of a cooling loop. And then we're going to check the temperature and once it's gone down over kind of its initial really hot temperature, we're then going to pass it into loops that are farther out and maybe a little bit cooler. And then after that, we can pass that off into other loops, right? So I'm guessing that the coldest temperatures are going to be over here until the meteors fall on it. But in general, we want the coolest temperatures over here and we want the hottest temperatures right here. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see if it works. All right, so here's how this is working. We're bringing in the regolith right here, and then it's going to run around here, and it'll hopefully try to cool down from its really hot temperature to something like, I don't know, 180 degrees Celsius. So once it is below 180, then this should activate, pushing it out into a different loop. Oh, yes. Feel the symmetry. Mmm. Mm-hmm. 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 You know it's good when it looks this good. Oh, yeah, that's going to work. All right, now i got to give that a direction. I think I'll go this way with it. I can detect there, and then we can ship out over there. So that means this material is coming up, which means I might want to detect here and ship out right here. Oh, yeah. In case you're wondering, yes, this is going to cost a lot of materials, but hey, you made it to space. What else do you have to do? Build amazing things. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just build this into a nice loop. So it'll come out over here, do this sort of thing. I think at some point we're going to have to check the temperature and see if it's cool enough to get rid of. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And then we could put that right there. And then this, oh yeah. Perfect. Not only that, we already have all the power that we need here, there, and everywhere. Awesome. So then that will go in like so, and that goes in like so. And because we might as well do this right down there. Boom. It comes out right there. Oh, yes. All right. So just to give you kind of a rundown of what's happening here, we're going to have light that's coming in up here. That's going to go through these windows and a little bit of steam and get right down here to the solar panels. These will probably not generate quite as much power as the design over here because they have more material they have to run through. But whether or not we can max it out, we'll see. It might work. Over here on the right and the left, I'm just going to put a little bit of water. I'll put a thousand kilograms on either side. 
As that turns to steam, it'll be brought in through the steam turbine, and then that steam turbine is going to output the water back over here to the left and the right. And I don't know why there's oil in that pipe, so I'm gonna get rid of that. <laughs> no, please don't. Now, as far as the material that's being shipped out, it'll come in over here, and then we're going to run through the first sensor here. If that's below 180 degrees Celsius, then awesome. If this goes below, let's say 150, then we're going to push it out into the rails on the outside, depending on which one it picks up first. Maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. And then let's say if we get below 120, then we're going to push it out of the system altogether. This may be way more complicated than it needs to be, but hey, let's see what happens. I kind of just want an excuse to use the new conveyor rail thermal sensors. <laughs> All right, so this will be cool. We'll be able to see just how much more or less power we're able to produce with this equipment over here. I should have many, many cycles now of data collected up on this setup over here. Matter of fact, if I go ahead and I take a look at the summary, ooh, we should see just how much power we generated. <laughs> once, once I go through all the achievements that I didn't get. All right, so if we take a look at the average power produced from, I don't know, right around cycle 50 on, it seems to jump up as high as 1,300 and then lower depending on what's happening. That's gonna be kind of how the power looks because it is very random because it's based on what the meteors are doing. So we're going to have to do some numbers here to kind of average that out over time. But let's see if this even works over here before we go and do all the data collecting. All right, so there's one thing I forgot to hook up here and that is for the crude oil. What I want to do here is I want to pass the hottest crude oil right through this area. All right, so yes, I'm bringing in the crude oil right down here. It goes up here. This is where it's going to be the coldest. And then the hot side will be right down there. And that will flow right down underneath the steam turbine. Aha, there we go. Set. I wonder how long it's going to take something like this to get enough power to start up. Let's see here. So far, it doesn't really have enough juice to get going. These doors actuate extremely slowly when they don't have enough power. There was actually one comment asking me, how much power do you need in order to kind of operate the bunker doors? And the answer is, it's nine kilojoules per bunker door to open it and then close it. So uh, I like to have one smart battery for two doors at least, although it does help to have a little extra power here. So in case you're wondering, this whole system here, based on kind of the equipment I'm looking at, has 18 batteries. Hey, there we go, now we got a little power. Uh, but, just like that, that's when the next meteor storm hit. Lame. And that blew up the window over here. I think you might need to supply power to this thing just to get it up and running. Because otherwise, you run into this situation. We can't do anything. So let me just supply some power. All right, here we go. Now we're starting to see the steam show up. So we've got Crude oil, that's currently at 113 degrees Celsius. The shipping stuff that's moving through here, ooh, it's coming in at 30 degrees Celsius. Why is it so cold? And also, why isn't it shipping out? Oh, because there's no power wire connected to it. Got it. All right, now it's starting to look like something. There we go, now we're getting some things to ship out. Steam temperature is below 120 some degrees. What's the temps like around here? Well, it is about 122 degrees or so. Some sides are a little bit hotter though. This is about 130 over here. Hmm. So I think what we're seeing here is that the sweepy docks are cold and therefore it's cooling down the regolith or something like that. Let's see what happens when we bring back some material here. Yeah, the regolith is coming back cool. What? It's coming back at 33? <laughs> How did this end up at 36 degrees Celsius? What? That doesn't make any sense at all. The regolith is cold. Sweepy, the heat deleter. Well, <laughs> if you want to delete heat, apparently just call Sweepy, man, as a set temperature. Mmm, you know what that means. We can exploit it. But what we can't do is apparently use it to make a bunch of power. Well, crap, it's already cold. All of this was useless for now until it patches. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> Are you saying that we could just set a sweepy loose on an infinite storage system and it would just constantly maintain the same temperature? Hmm. Well, we're learning stuff. But for right now, 
My amazing cooling loops are pointless. <sighs> Ooh, it hurts me to do this, but... Oh. Oh, oh, you know what we can do? You know this loop that I'm running up here to cool stuff down? You could actually use the regolith that you're sweeping up to keep the equipment cool. I mean, there is... There is a reason for it. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all of this, right? We're just going to go like that and like this. And then we'll use the regolith to cool the robo miners. But then again, if that changes in the future, well, then, you know, you can just go ahead and use the liquid pipes like you did in the old days. Now, let's take a look at the temperatures of this stuff. Ooh, yeah. 86 and dropping. Although it's going to go through the doors. Ah, rats. It's really not a great spot to move that stuff. All right, let's take a look at the illumination. We're at 27,000 lux right up there. All the way up here, we're at the basically the same amount. But by the time we get down through a couple of windows and some steam, we're down to 13,000. So we're actually generating a fair bit less power that way. The real question is, what is the difference? Ah, uh, you see this thing, it got too hot. Even though we do have carbon dioxide that can find its way in here, I think you really just need to cool that stuff because it runs so much. All right, so I'm really not getting a lot of heat out of this thing. I mean, this steam turbine just does not want to run. So I think what I can do here is I can, I can get a little bit more heat if, I go ahead and run iron pipes through the doors like this. Because those doors are hot. And when the doors are closed, they're getting hit with meteorites, which means they're also going to be quite hot themselves. So we can extract some of the heat from these big old doors. All right, so you can see here that we do generate enough lux through this right now for it to actually get down there and make a difference. So it really depends on the time of day. It kind of like at its peak, you do get enough to max out these solar panels. Not all of them, but at least these two. The other two are kind of hidden behind some other tiles and whatnot, but... Okay, can I just say, watching this stuff ship out like this is awesome. Like, if for no other reason, then <laughs> that's what we should do all the time. It just looks cool. All right, so finally this thing is up and running. We are now generating a little bit of power via the steam turbine here. Awesome. And I'm also tallying up the old system here, so we can kind of get just an idea of what the average is. Right there, boom! What is it? 1,023 kilojoules. That was the old design, this one right here. So, I'm gonna let this run for a little bit. I'm gonna go grab some lunch, and then we're gonna see how much power this thing actually generates over about 20 cycles or so. All right, I'm back from lunch. Nothing like some soup. I'm getting kind of tired of soup, <laughs> but here are our results. So we have 761 kilojoules. So it's not quite as effective as the previous system over here. So no, we did not improve anything this time. Now, I think the reason that we didn't do this was ultimately because of the amount of illumination that comes through to the solar panels. As far as the actual heat that's going into the steam turbine, you know what? This thing doesn't really get over 150 degrees Celsius inside of here. It kind of bounces between 140 and 150, and that's about it. Things that I think were beneficial to this design is taking a little bit of heat out of the doors. Obviously, those are under a fair bit of regolith like this until the actual thing opens up, so you can get a little bit of extra power out of it. That might make this design a little bit better. However, is it more valuable to have this exposed to something hot and then kind of forego the solar panels a little bit? No, it doesn't seem like that. The solar panels are kind of more important, and however you need to arrange them seem to be a little bit better. The difference isn't really that big between the two systems, but considering all of this needs to be made out of steel, but you can get away with making this out of iron, the system over here was a lot cheaper. We also saw that the auto sweeper here does require a little bit of cooling in order to stay efficient and productive, and the reason is because it tends to run quite a bit. These guys bring over a lot of stuff and therefore it can't really dissipate heat faster than it's building heat. So keeping that cool is important. The one major thing that I wasn't expecting, but I think it's pretty awesome here, is the fact that Sweepy has a set output temperature. At least for now. Mmm, but you bet I'm gonna make a video on it. But surprisingly, that actually deletes a ton of heat. I thought we were going to get a lot out of the regolith that was going through the conveyor rails. But as it turns out, nope. 
That didn't happen. All right, so I went ahead and took what I learned off of this system over here and reapplied it to this one on the right, just to kind of see what the numbers would be like if we really focused on trying to get the heat out of the bunker doors. And as it turned out, this was an average of 880 kilojoules per cycle right there. So I think this has something to do with the variability of just how many meteors are striking and whatnot. But uh, when you really look at this and you really start to say, okay, so why are the numbers not all that different? Well, the reason that the numbers are not all that different is because a majority of the power comes from the solar panels here. You can see 1000 kilojoules comes from the solar panel and only 182 came from the steam turbine. When we're really talking about an efficient use of your space and ways to get power out of space, solar panels are incredibly powerful as compared to something like a steam turbine. Now there are ways to get more, I know actually a ton of power out of regolith itself, but in the way that we're handling it here, it isn't really all that useful. So a lot of this stuff, all of this pipes and coolings and whatnot, the really only benefit that we're getting out of this steam turbine here is a little bit of power when we're not you know, when we're during the night, maybe we get about 300, 400 watts or so just to kind of keep things running. But for the most part, we're getting cooling out of it. But we've already got really cold stuff coming out of the sweepy bots, which makes me think that there's an even simpler way and possibly an even more powerful way to do this whole setup. But I'll have to take a look at that in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. As always, stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you again next time. Peace. Mrothgar out.